Sometimes I buy things that don't make any sense whatsoever. Yeah. Case in point. Last week we purchased a buggy from Facebook Marketplace and we're trying to turn it into an F1 car. We stripped it down last week, picked the motor, cleaned things up, and now this week we're gonna take things up a notch. This week we're going to install the motor, get the wheel spinning, install a jack shaft, motor mounts, and do lots of math. Math I haven't done in a very long time, or ever. Now people are gonna say that, Rich, it's not a real F1 car, and I'll say to them, you know it is real? My mortgage. Let's get into it. Now in order to mount the engine inside of the F1 car, we need to make motor mounts. Instead of reinventing the wheel, we use the original mounting brackets from old projects, like the Hayabusa pickup truck, for example. In case you didn't know, we reuse a lot of the stuff, the things we have here, because some of the designs aren't very human, so we recycle the dangerous stuff because we learn from building all of them. The cyber quad, the side-by-side, -side, the electric six-by-six, -six, the Hayabusa pickup, all of those have been recycled for the greater good, and this also saves money and space because we don't have the space to keep all of this cool stuff. Remember, we aren't experts in anything, we learn as we go. Now, installing the motor is a fun one. We decided to use our laser to get the exact positioning of the bottom sprocket. Why the bottom sprocket? Because we aren't moving the transmission. It's already permanently mounted, and the only thing that has flexibility to move is the motor itself, so we're gonna move the motor so that the sprocket is on the same axis as the transmission sprocket. That way, when we build the jack shaft, it will line up with everything correctly. Now, making the motor mounts was always the fun part. We used to hate doing that. Now it's much easier. We literally cut a piece of cardboard out, traced it with our new arc droid, and literally spit out a new piece of metal for us in about 30 seconds or so. This thing is, in fact, pretty damn cool. Now here's the part that's kind of challenging, figuring out what sprocket to use. And that takes power from the engine and goes to the transmission. We're doing this via sprockets because motorcycle engine already has a chain and sprocket, and that's what you want to use to connect it to the transmission. Now in order to get the sprocket size, I have to do some math, and we have to also install something called a jack shaft, which makes things even more complex. Now I really, really want high acceleration in the lower gears, and up top, I don't think I want to go over 100 miles an hour in this thing. Honestly, probably 20 miles an hour is probably a bit much too. But for a wheel shredding fun and getting as much torque as humanly possible out of this high revving motor, I'm going to set the first gear top speed to 35 miles an hour. Now here's what I know about the buggy so far. The red line on the Hayabusa is 11,000 RPM. The Hayabusa first gear is a 2.6 to 1 ratio after my research online. The rear end ratio of this buggy, I'm not really sure, but we can figure that out. And I do know that the Hayabusa has a 16 tooth sprocket. I also know that the rear tire size is 235 to 75 to 15. So we're going to figure out the rear end ratio by rolling the buggy back and forth to see how many revolutions that the shaft makes for each full rotation of the tire. And we got nine to ones. I also want to figure out the rear wheel tire height. I'm just going to use Google for how tall is a 235 by 75 by 15 tire. And we got approximately 29 inches. Okay, so we got nine to one for the ratio. Now let's do some math. Not so quick, but I'll try to make this as not boring as possible. Two hours later. Well, guys, I honestly tried my best. There is no possible way to make this math any less boring. I'm just gonna jump to the final result. We finally got to an 18 tooth sprocket in the rear. So we're gonna go ahead with that. If you look at this math on the, on the whiteboard I just did, it's probably all wrong, but freeze frame the video, check the math and tell me where I went wrong. It probably is, but we're gonna see how wrong we are when this thing's driving. In the video, we're building a really cool, fun and fast car. It's an F1 car. Well, it's F1-esque and it's black. It's just like me. Except it runs on 93 octane, and I run on greens. These green gummies are my secret weapon. They've got your greens, your prebiotics, your multivitamin, all packed into one ridiculously tasty snack. No weird powders, no horse pills, just good stuff that actually works. And they're not just a multivitamin or greens or prebiotics. They're all that and more. There's eight gummies you have to take a day. Why eight? Because you can't pack this much nutrition into just one. It tastes like a fruit snack, no artificial stuff, no gelatin, just vegan, pectin-based goodness. It's also gluten-free, nut-free, dairy-free, basically the opposite of garage snacks. Plus they're methylated, which means even if you got that gene mutation, 
and you probably won't do the lab work to figure that out, but your body can still absorb those nutrients. No more paying for expensive pee. But really though, if you're just working hard and you're building crazy stuff, or you're just trying to feel human again, grab Groons. Click the link for up to 45% off your body and your mom will thank you. Uh, obviously we're uh, working on this buggy at the moment. Uh, the engine is in and mounted. Roderick is actively working on cutting the, uh, the hubs off so we could adapt uh, the Arkimoto wheels to here. That's gonna be a whole nother project in itself. But the most important thing I wanna talk about is the fuel tank. So when we looked inside the old fuel tank, uh, there was some rust on the inside, so we can't use that. So I decided in my infinite wisdom to simply just measure this cavity. And I found one online that should have been perfect. It said it was 10 inches in diameter, and it was like 33 inches wide. I'm like, that's easy. That's like right here and then right about here. And this is how I measured it with my hands. I did, that's about 10 inches in diameter. And I said, that's about like 30 something. Chad actually didn't trust any of my hand math. And he went ahead and recreated the same cylinder for the fuel tank that's going in here. And this is how large it is. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's a lot larger than I thought. And it's on its way. Um, yeah. So I hope this fits. All right, let's, <laughs> let's try it out. Damn, that's big. That's what she said. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty, that's not bad. Well, <laughs> it has I, to I was going to put the oil cooler down there for fresh air, but uh, that's yeah. not happening. Now we have better fuel <laughs> capacity. Now we could drive across country in one tank. <laughs> <laughs> I may have, yeah. The, tank, the tank's three times the size of the motor. Yeah, I know, I know. But, I mean, it's, you know, the more fuel is that's in it, you get a lower center of gravity, and, you know, that'd be pretty good. But this I, is... I, I, think, I think you're suffering from range anxiety from the Volkswagen situation. I am, I am so. yeah. But no, this <laughs> is overcompensating This a is bit. a lot bigger than I thought. Yeah, that, that's... This is significantly bigger than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I wanted as many gallons as like, this is probably the maximum it. size you could fit in here. Now, so. here, here's, here's a one little hang up. Yeah. We don't have the, the fiberglass insert in here. That's going to be a little bump up. Yeah. Be a little so we need to figure out what this is going to be like with the fiberglass insert in here, because this might have to go further back. And if that's true, it's not going to be sitting here because we have frame, frame rails back here. Yeah. So with these vertical tubes that hits right now, you're probably gonna have to go like up in here and that's like dangerously close to that chain. <laughs> that is See, big. This is, this is why I wanted to make a mock-up of it. I'm glad you made it. Yeah, cause we, we'd, be, we'd be suffering um, if it Last minute, came uh, in. like after we mounted everything and be like, oh, how are we gonna fit that in there? <laughs> this, this is my hand math at work. All right, ready? All right, so this goes go up here. <laughs> Damn. Um, hang on, lift this up and we're gonna put it where you originally measured it for. And the tank smushed. That's it. <laughs> it's not fitting there. The tank smushed. I'm hoping that the, I mean, it's a Chinese tank like everything else is made in China. I'm hoping that their measurements are off. I'm hoping they meant like <laughs> centimeters instead of inches in diameter. So, I don't yeah, know, we'll let's, see. Ho let's hope that it's, it's smaller and undersized. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is a really crappy drawing of the Hayabusa engine, okay? Forgive me for this, I'm sorry. This is the sprocket for the transmission, and this is the sprocket for the Hayabusa. As you can see, it's offset, because this is used to being in a motorcycle. Typically, you'd have the Hayabusa engine right here, you'd have the swing arm, and you'd have a rear wheel. There'd be a giant rear wheel, with the sprocket and the chain goes around this way and everything is perfect. This is direct line of sight. Unfortunately for this, for this setup, it's not quite the same. We have this here, this here. We have a casing that surrounds everything and this goes right here instead. Because that's offset, that hits this casing right here and that no longer makes sense. That's gonna crack that case if it stays like that. So what we're gonna do instead is we're going to make this here, this right here. We're gonna use something called a jack shaft. This allows us to have the chain come out here 
onto a similarly sp uh, sized sprocket on the Hayabusa, and then this goes right here as a direct line of sight. This looks really terrible, but you'll see what it looks like when we're actually done with it. So what we got here is the original knuckles from this kit car that we chopped off the spindle on. And I just made some temporary spacers to see if this would fit. So it'll, it has enough turning radius at this distance for the caliper to clear. Well, it's clean. That's the idea. So, this was the tank, the faux tank that Chad made, and the actual tank came in. I'm going to say Chad was pretty close <laughs> with, with this estimation as to how big it was going to be. I think this one's a little bit higher, but it's within, you know, a few millimeters of each other. So, I think it's a pretty good representation of uh, what's going to be in the actual buggy itself. Roderick actually gave it a really, really nice gloss black uh, Rust-Oleum paint job. Uh, the chrome is now gone. It is de -chrome. You know how I hate chrome. What we're going to do now is we're going to put the uh, fuel tank in and we're going to see how much room we have or lack of room that we have to put it. Okay. So that fits down there pretty nicely. However, here comes the problem. You know what? That's not too bad. That's actually not as bad as I thought, actually. And it actually fits in there. Yeah, if we could tilt it back a little bit, like right there. It's actually not terrible. I would like it as low as humanly possible. Oh, you know what? It's aluminum too. So we gotta get a hammer and do some convincing on that side, if we need to. I'm not saying we're going to, but we could if we wanted to. So it's a soft metal, so we could convince it. 
Uh, I would like it to be as low as possible because obviously there's an issue with the center of gravity of the uh, engine being so high. I want to keep the fuel and any additional weight as low as possible. Obviously the driver sits back here, center of gravity is low, fuel tank is low as well. I want to counterbalance or counteract this engine being so high with the, the driver and the fuel tank being low. So hanging it uh, from a little higher margin on that side isn't ideal and it brings it closer to the chain. So what we've done so far is obviously Roger painted it, it looks great. Uh, Joey at this point right now, he finished up the accelerator pedal. A lot of this was done with the ArcDroid. Thank you ArcDroid again. Uh, we have to finish up the front brakes. The front suspension is complete. This uh, front end has been converted to the uh, Arkimoto front shocks as well as the Arkimoto hubs. So it stops, it breaks. The suspension is a lot tighter and less loose than the last one and we can get actual parts for it. The problem before uh, wasn't necessarily stopping power even though that was part of it. Now we could actually stop this thing better and we were able to get parts off the shelf for it. I think the rotors are from John Deere and other parts are from other various snowmobiles which you could still get now. Uh, on the side here, uh, we have the accelerator pedal going all the way back. And the back as a test, we have the clutch pedal. Joby set this up just to make sure to see if it was gonna work and it actually does work with some minor adjustments. Now at this point, he could actually extend the cable and bring the clutch pedal all the way up to the front where it belongs. Now the next steps on this are as follows. We have to get different wheels and tires for the front and also different wheels and tires for the rear as well. These wheels are very heavy. I wanna to go to a lighter uh, steel setup. They won't look as pretty, but they'll be better for acceleration and all about performance. The jack shaft on this side, again, is completed. I'm gonna roll it back and forth so you can see what it looks like when it spins, but um, that way I don't have to be in front of the motor. But that's the point. There's no creaking, no popping. It goes very smoothly. It's all aligned. And there's actually chain tension built in here as well. So if we want to tension the chain, we can undo these four bolts, slide it up, slide it down to adjust tension. We could actually adjust the angle too by undoing these bolts to the sides and raising it up and down. So this is fully adjustable. One of the problems we had on the last build we did with the electric side-by-side, -side, it was not adjustable. So again, we're learning, we're evolving as things go on. The other problem we're having too is the exhaust. We have to figure out what to do for this portion. Uh, right now it's flipped up just to have the exhaust gases get away from us. Uh, but once we're ready, we're gonna flip these down and Joey's gonna form uh, an exhaust system that's gonna come to collect go four into one and come right out the back with a muffler. Cause this thing is insanely loud without a muffler on it. But other than that, uh, stay tuned guys. We're still working on this thing. It's, we're at the home stretch already. We don't wanna drag this build out for too long. And um, hopefully soon we can get into some iced tea stuff. See you guys.